so today I have another video for you as you may or may not know I'm doing my favorites seasonally so it's about time for my winter favorites so my winter favorites are going to cover December January and February if you missed my fall favorites which would have been October th or September through November I will link that down below as well as up in a card but yeah I have a bunch of favorites this season because I was keeping really good track of them. I made a list on my phone so I would actually remember everything that I wanted to share with you. So for my winter favorites I have a bunch of beauty things that I want to save, share with you and then only a couple of random favorites actually. So yeah I've been trying a bunch of new beauty and skincare type things that I want to share. So my first one which I know that I've shared in other favorites videos before but I have been loving it especially really recently and using it a lot is my Makeup Forever HD foundation. As I pointed out before, this is the old one. It has the black band instead of the silver. It's not the Ultra HD. I do have a bottle of the Ultra HD, but I have been using this one up pretty thoroughly. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm getting pretty close to the end. I wish it opened so I could see how much I have left. But when I do try to like squish some out onto my face or onto my hands, sometimes nothing comes out. So I'm really sad that this is running out. But I'm pretty excited to move on to the Ultra HD. My second, though the last month or so I haven't been using highlighter a lot, still in December and January I was using this highlighter a lot. This is the Sephora Micro Smooth Illuminator or Baked Luminizer in Stardust. And it is a dupe for NARS Albatross, which as you may know is an absolutely beautiful white highlight with a bit of a gold undertone. Not sure how well you can see in the pan. Hopefully the swatch will be better maybe. But there's definitely a gold shimmer and it's just absolutely gorgeous. Really great for pale skin. But yeah, I've been using that a lot. And it's much cheaper than NARS Albatross too. Another favorite, which is probably not very surprising, I've done a bunch of tutorials using this and a couple of get ready with me's and stuff and I've mentioned it before I did a review on it. And that is the Urban Decay Gwen Stefani palette. I'm sure you're sick to death of hearing of it right now, but this palette is really, really great. Maybe not as much for deeper skin tones, but for us pale girls, this is a great palette. Full of really good neutrals, this matte, cool tone shade here called Anaheim is really great for contouring. It's what I'm wearing now. I'm not sure how well you can see it, but it is really great for a subtle non-orange highlight for pale people. And yeah, depending what your preferences are, this might just look like a lot of the same color. These three up here have a lot of similarities. These three mattes here in the center are really, really great crease colors. This would be good all over the color, all over the lid color as well. The three bright colors at the bottom are all really, really great. I love a good gold and this one is beautiful. But those are all really great and now I'm covered in glitter. So yeah, that palette has been um, one of my absolute favorites recently. And then a bit more of a more recent purchase within the last month or so. I got MAC Viva Glam 1, but yeah, it's just a really beauty, beautiful, sort of universally flattering red color. And of course, it's a Viva Glam, so money to HIV research, which is great. And it's just beautiful. Let me swatch it. It is a matte, but it's not one of their retro mattes, so it's not super drying. And it's just really gorgeous. On me, it's a bit more of a deep red with a bit of a brick tone which is kind of weird because it doesn't look like that on my hand but I do have fairly pigmented pink lips so that might be part of why and it really shows against my pale skin and it's just a bit more deep and neutral which makes it a lot more comfortable for me to wear and I would definitely recommend you check it out if you are looking for a really good red. Another recent favorite which I'm wearing right now under a layer of powder is the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte Foundation. I realize I'm throwing two foundations into this favorites but it's just kind of how it goes. These have pretty much been the only two foundations I've been wearing for the past couple of months, and I'm just in love. I picked this one up again really recently during my trip to Bella's Fair in the States a couple of weeks ago. I did a haul video including this and a bunch of clothes try-ons, which I will again link down below and in a card for you if you want to go check that out. This foundation is really great and I did want to talk about it. I will also be doing a review of this foundation, so I don't want to talk about it too much here. 
But yeah, it is just a Debbie matte finish, and I'm not sure it lasts for 24 hours, but it does last a good long time. It's beautiful coverage, and it actually sets really well. I have skin that tends to get a little bit oily throughout the day, as well as some dry patches, because, you know, what was more fun than dry and oily skin. But this foundation actually sets on me, and if I don't actually have to powder it, there's very, very few foundations I've found that I don't have to powder, and this is one of them. So I'm really glad that I picked this up, especially if you can find it on sale, do you pick it up. It is a bit pricey. It was $15 in Target in the States, and it's usually about $20 here in Canada, though I have seen it on sale for as low as $15. Give that one a look if you're looking for a good medium coverage foundation. And then I just have two sort of more skincare type items. The first is my Garnier Skin Active Micellar Water All-in-One Cleansing Water. I did not buy this one myself. I did receive it from Chick Advisor to test out and I've been really, really loving it. I have also tried the Bioderma, the original one with the pink lid, which is clearly what this one is trying to be. And I really like this one better. I've been using it a lot. It's almost completely replaced my Bioderma in my skincare and I still have a half a bottle of the Bioderma left. Uh, when I run out of both of them, I am planning to get the Garnier waterproof one, which has a uh, blue lid. And I was looking at it in store the other day, and the top sort of third or quarter of the bottle seems to have a different layer. So it's like it has a oil layer. So it's like a biphase makeup remover. And I mean, this one already does a pretty good job removing my waterproof makeup. Like it doesn't take it all off, but it does give it a go. So that will be my next thing. But I do really love this. If you're looking for a good micellar water, this one is 400 milliliters and $10 here in Canada. So definitely give this one a go. It's at least as good as the Bioderma, in my opinion. And then the final sort of beauty favorite that I have left for you is a lip balm. And I... I have a love-hate relationship with lip balm. It's great because it makes your lips feel good, but lip balm doesn't seem to do much for me when it's not on my lips. I hate the greasy feeling, I hate the sticky feeling, I hate the heavy feeling, I hate the oily feeling. There's very few lip balms that I'll actually approve of. I know I've talked about the Burt's Bees, I think it's the mango butter one which is very, very nice and it smells really delicious. So I really do like using that one, but it still doesn't seem to do much for my lips when it's no longer on my lips, which is why I really love this one. This is the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Lip Therapy, lip therapy lip balm. It's petroleum free, which is great because while it looks like a sort of petroleum based uh, product, it doesn't have any petroleum jelly, so it's not just covering up your lips. It actually moisturizes them. It has a ton of really great ingredients. The entire back is just covered in a list of wonderful ingredients. I am going to be doing a review, a was <laughs> again, of uh, these two products together, which I got as a set. This is just a mini of the Vitamin Hydrating Mist. So I will be doing a review on these, which should be coming up in a week or two. So do look for that, but yeah, if you're looking for a really great lip balm and you're not worried too much about the price, I think this is somewhere between $12 and $15 in Canada. But this stuff is just amazing. It does have a slight mint smell, but not like a candy mint smell. It's really, really soft. It's not too shiny either, especially if you put on a thin layer, it dissolves into your skin super quickly, like your lip skin or your hand skin, and it actually works. Like. It sort of gets in my like cracks because my lips can sort of develop like scales almost and it really helps to sort of make all of my lips feel like skin again. I know that I rambled a ton about a lip balm. I just have a couple more things that I do want to share with you. So one thing, and I'm not going to hold this up for you because you wouldn't be able to see it, but uh, one thing that I have been loving especially over the past few months have been my Torrid leggings. For a long time, I didn't wear leggings because I they're not clothes. And they're not. They're not clothes. But they are super, super comfortable and they're light clothes. Um, so I have about four pairs from Torrid now. I have a black pair, um, a gray pair with skulls on the knees, a black pair with like little skull studs up the sides, and a cropped pair with lipstick all over them. And they're all really, really great. They're really great quality. They fit really well. They stretch. They're not too tight anywhere. Um, they're not too short or too long. And they're super, super comfortable. They are a little bit pricey, 
but for good quality plus size leggings, the Torrid ones are excellent. And yeah, I've been pretty much living in them as often as I can recently because they're just so, so comfortable and really great for layering, of course. Another favorite that I've been kind of obsessed with recently, though I kind of got stuck in the middle of this one, but it's sort of a pair of mobile games, actually. The one I'm playing right now is called Lifeline Silent Night, and it is, as you can see here, just sort of a text-based game. And basically what the premise is of both Lifeline and Lifeline Silent Night is you get a, like a text communication from this guy who's crash landed on a planet and is reaching out for help. And basically he explains to you everything that's happening and you get to respond. It gives you two things. Sometimes the responses that you can give don't really seem to affect the story and are more like to make you feel like you're interacting, but sometimes you can actually help him make choices like should he go towards this ship or should he stay at this ship? Should he go towards the mountain or stay and help a friend? And it kind of it's kind of cool because you feel like you're actually interacting with this guy and it's also um, done sort of in real time, which you can turn off if you want, but it's more immersive if you do do it real time. Because he'll talk to you for a bit and you'll give your like input and stuff and then he'll go, okay, I'm going to go explore, I'll talk to you later. And it'll be anywhere from an hour to a couple of hours before he contacts you again and like updates you. So it's kind of cool. You don't have to respond in real time, like he will keep updating you. But if you don't respond, it just sort of waits there. Nothing bad is going to happen if you don't immediately respond to him. So you don't have to feel like it has to take over your life, which is really great. And why I kind of got stuck in the middle of this one, because I keep forgetting to go back to it. But it is a really fun game. And uh, Lifeline Silent Night is a sequel game with the same character. There are a couple of other Lifeline games, but Lifeline and Lifeline Silent Night are both following um, Taylor. I do think both games are pay. I think they're about $3 Canadian or something. It's a pretty fun game, especially if you like games that aren't too action-y or anything and are more sort of puzzly and logic-y because it's just more like a real life simulation type thing. And I really enjoy it. And then I have another fashion-y thing to share with you actually. They are these sort of fuzzy moccasins that I got from Payless. I actually got them from Christmas. I asked for them for Christmas from my mom, um, but they were from Payless. And they just got sort of the fake fur inside, sort of a fake suede outside with the little bows, and they're just little gray moccasins. They come in a bunch of colors from Payless. They got proper soles, so they're like shoes. I wear them like flats. They're super comfortable. I mean, they're not waterproof or anything because they are just fabric. So they will soak up water if you get them wet. But they actually dry up pretty well. And I think they were like maybe $20. So they were a pretty good deal. I definitely will want another pair of them if these ones die. I think that I have talked about enough things for this month. I hope that you enjoyed my favorites for the months of December, January, and February. Do let me know if you have tried any of the things that I mentioned and what your thoughts were down in the comments below. And give me a thumbs up if you liked this video. Subscribe if you want to see more videos from me, and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys! Hi guys! So today I have another tag video for you. I'm going to be doing the eyeshadow junkie tag. So it looks like there are just 10 questions, so it should be a pretty short video unless I have lots to ramble about.